Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Technique Thursday. I'm going to try to be as brief as I can and talk about a couple different techniques for doing cuts on vehicles. Um, uh, and I'm going to try to talk pretty quickly. Um, a lot of things you can do with cars. You can do open doors, uh, open hoods, things like that. And uh, there's, a, there's one technique of using a single car. Uh, there's another technique that I use in the past of two cars, uh, depending on the level of detail that you want. And I wanted to go over those really quick. It's one of my uh, crash cars that you've seen in recent videos. It's just a good example car. And you'll see it again when I do uh, a video on uh, pairing up interiors. Um, the Sethster, his car, um, has uh, a set of seats from an, another car and a bed from an, uh, the, the, the Datsun pickup truck. And you can do a bunch of different things, but on cuts and stuff, you can do a single cut by using a single car and then just slowly working it. Um, this one in particular, I was able to come this way um, and very cautiously and carefully, I ground out just a little bit of metal and using an X-Acto blade, I kind of just sliced in there enough for me to get one of my hobby knives in there or hobby blades and just saw it out. Very painstaking process, easy to screw up. Uh, and once you put a lot of effort for you to screw up, it's kind of discouraging. But I tend to stay away from the Dremels. The other technique that I use uh, for creating doors, or open doors, uh, so to speak, is I take two vehicles. I take one vehicle and I will drill a hole uh, into the side of the vehicle, and I'll flip this around. So I'll take one vehicle and I'll just drill a couple bore holes and I'll just ground or cut as much as I can just tearing a hole into this. Then I'll grab another car and I'll just hack off the areas that I don't need and I'll slowly just grind it down. But this car here, and I'm probably getting sick and tired of seeing this one, um, I did that. It's just all one piece from the original car including the top portion of the window guides and whatnot. And uh, you can kind of go crazy with the details here. This is another example where the uh, lip on the door, I just used a Dremel with a grinding tool and I kind of made that. Uh, a lot of patience. Had I screwed up, the second attempt at the door would not have included that. Same thing here, I used the original donor car and I cut around um, the trunk and for this car I cut the hole into the trunk. So that's the other technique. Um, complex cuts for making convertibles on the other hand, you can do a couple different things. I uh, have a tendency to go um, uh, through the windows when making the cuts. And um, I would love to have had a car ready to show you. Um, but I picked the wrong example. But basically, this window is not tall enough. On a car like this, uh, if you saw the video on the Sethster, uh, the progress that I made on that car, I basically uh, did my start cuts by sliding the blade through. Uh, and I actually have a blade where I've taken out that nib, so it, there's, it's not as much of an inter interruption. Um, <clears throat> and then the reason you go from the bottom is you just want to start your cut. Uh, you can use the pillars uh, as a placeholder. I do it with the car together. And then when I'm doing the more detailed work, I'll take the car apart. Um, and I use that just to cut this piece off here. Uh, you really want to start, though, with the more fragile pieces. And by fragile, I mean the stuff that would likely bend or collapse if you put too much pressure on it. So for my convertibles, I always start from the underside to get this, this hole started. But then once I have the notch, I just kind of work my blade this way some this way some and then you can with these thinner more flexible blades you can twist even the smaller ones and just kind of follow this arc i did this with the chevelle convertible the little hipster convertible um where i made the the seca racing car uh did a little curve here and then came over and got rid of the b pillars back here Complex cuts can be done with the interiors too. This uh, Chevelle interior came from the Chevelle convertible, the same year, model year, uh, the 1970 Chevelle. Um, but basically, this interior here, the only thing I had to do was cut a layer off the bottom in order for it to sit flush, and they go right in. Um, so that's that's one thing. 
And again, I don't take the car apart until after the cut is made. Um, so that's that. Um, this is another example of uh, using a car uh, with the Batman's Hot Rod, uh, which you'll see again for Mockery Monday. Uh, basically, this is an example where I do the three bore or f the four bore holes, and uh, work my way in, and then I'll come back with a Dremel uh, and just grind away with it off the body, and um, go from there. You can see how the grinding comes along. That's a cool angle for that car. Um, so. The other thing is, uh, Hot Wheels has producing, been producing more and more plastic bodied cars. And that's kind of good if you're wanting to get into the habit of doing some complex cuts. Uh, but it's very thick plastic and you have to use a finer tooth saw blade because the feathering or the, the little dusting on the edge is more pronounced. That can be fixed uh, with a good sanding block, uh, good files to kind of take it down uh, some. But um, <clears throat> this is the new front end for the Batman's Hot Rod that I'm doing. Um, we're talking about complex cuts, and uh, this is an example of one of my other project cars that I'm going to be giving away. Um, and if you look closely with this shadow, you can see here that there's light coming through here. Um, the technique for doing this is to grab your Dremel and here lately I guess because the aftermarket of making more detailed vehicles you can actually see a line where the crease is and that's because Hot Wheels come back and they'll either cast this with the hood open or close um, so the, the goal is to do both an open door and an open hood um, and then I wanted to show you if you can see where I start to come across here to meet up with that so I don't want to damage the headlight I just want to keep working this This is a very slow process I think the easier way would just be to tear out the hood and go from there but I'm kind of a stubborn uh, well screw it I'm a stubborn baby uh, so um, another hipster convertible that I'm working on is um, it's kind of a combination of a couple different things uh, a long time ago, one of my earlier customs, I took a 57 Chevrolet, uh, made it a convertible, and went a step further. I had the 59 Impala. I took the cowl from that Impala and seated it onto the 57 Chevrolet, and you can see these crease lines here um, where I made. And this is Bondos, my early days of the Hot Wheels uh, customizing. Not two, because uh, I think 96 the Impala came out. But. Um, once I made my lines, I've kind of filed it down flush on the Impala. I made it a convertible for first, and then I just got rid of all the excess around it and planted it in. You can see here the purple from the Impala here and here, and the. And the I also took the uh, the chassis from the 57, uh, from the 59 Impala, and put it here. This is an example of I screwed up the cut. I wanted to get a better rake, basically making the front super lower, like a low rider gasser, um, so to speak. And I made the wrong line, and I cut too much. So this is all. This is for nothing. I'm gonna redo it um, and fix that. Um, yeah. So screwed it up on both sides. Still a pretty cool car. So. Um, in uh, the spirit of that car, the complex car that I'm working on now, and I'll be wrapping this up shortly, <clears throat> is the, the speed bump. I took that apart, and uh, this is an example, another example of where uh, you just you start your lines here and here, and then uh, for this, I came around here similar to what I did. Uh, got rid of the post right here, and just started slowly cutting uh, along both sides. You can see some of the scrape marks there and there um, for this car but for what I want to do for this convertible I'm not exactly happy with how low that windshield is it looks cool but I'm marrying it up with the uh, uh, evil twin uh, which again I had made a convertible out of um, and I just tested it so I just ripped that back <clears throat> but I'm going to be using that cowl and the one of the complex cuts that I used here and this is in progress 
is I use the body's line, the natural line, and just to give you an idea, this is like how I did it. I use that curvature there to cut through. Then I'll come through without going all the way. I don't have to take out this whole section here. And I only want a portion of this. But um, I basically come through here, do the same thing on the other side. Once I have this more rigid part here cut, uh, then I'll come through here using the pillars as a guide straight down. And that will be married into this. And you can see it's perfect fit. So uh, the interior from this car, if you've ever taken this car apart, cool, cool, cool interior. It's going to be sit perfectly in this. So uh, those are the projects I wanted to show you. Um, Pooch, uh, I'm going to start doing the videos Technique Thursday with your car. And um, it's the 57 uh, El Capucho, which is the El Camino for Pooch. So... I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Happy Kraken and uh, another quality Pooch Man production. Uh, I'll stop using that tagline because half of you guys don't even know who Pooch is.